Looking at the heat map, the markets are largely down today. There was more red than there was any green or gray on the S&P 500. Crypto, though, is looking even sadder with what looks to be like a confirmed breakdown on Bitcoin, the move down to retest the low of the daily Gaussian channel, which I think is going to end up around 26,000 or a little below. Despite the sea of red in stocks and crypto today, somehow three of my biggest positions were doing great. Alibaba, BABA -A was up five bucks. Google jumped seven and Tesla had a nice little pop. This is the Stocks with Josh show. Thank you guys for hitting the like. Subscribe to get the market updates and the technical analysis that I give on popular stocks and crypto. But I want to advise you to watch out for the scammers in the comments. They use my picture and my name. They try to get you guys to DM them on WhatsApp and Telegram. It isn't me. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you guys an important chart that's going to put all of big tech into perspective right now, so make sure you watch to the end. All right, let's jump into some hot stocks. Yesterday, I gave you guys a target for Google to hit 117 when it was at 110, and today, that's exactly the number that it hit. What, though, is support and resistance right now? Well, support below for Google is 107, and resistance above gets really strong at around 120. We're very close to that. So I think it's safe to say that we're closer to the top of the range than we are to the bottom. But the upward move is actually looking good with this dominant weekly green candlestick that we got. Google, I think, is going to remain volatile for the next couple days. The bulls and the bears are battling it out right now. And I could see a pullback to 114, 115 range, but then a push back up on our way to the top of the Gaussian channel on the weekly, which coincides with the $120 price range. And it's also likely that we're going to break above the channel to retest the historical local top set on August of 2022 at the 122-123 price range. Google's on fire right now, but I am going to be looking to lock in the profits. You know that I'm worried about the impending crash of the looming debt ceiling. I've warned the perma bulls, don't get locked in at the top of big tech. All right, let's touch on BABA. Why did the stock jump? Before I get into that, let's first cover why the stock has been falling. Since it hit a recent high of 105 bucks, it fell all the way back to its recent March low of around 79. And it's down much further from its $120 local high that it set in January of 2023. There seems to be two culprits that are pressuring Chinese stocks right now. Some attribute it to US-China tensions. In my view, that's largely the Warren Buffett concern. But others point to the concern about a slow economic start from China after it recently reopened the economy from its COVID lockdowns. This article posted by Benzinga titled Markets Do Not Expect Much Out of Alibaba or Other Chinese Big Tech's Quarterly Earnings suggested just a week ago that China's post-COVID recovery is losing steam reducing the expectations of any kind of boost in Chinese tech stocks from their earnings. They went on to speculate, JD.com Inc. will kick off the season on Thursday with flat revenue growth, likely for the first quarter, marking its slowest pace on record. Bloomberg reported that, and then I followed that Bloomberg article, which read, Alibaba JD.com earnings will likely give stocks little help. Where Bloomberg speculated further, the lackluster expectations are fueling traders to snap up bearish bets in the options market. The put-to-call ratio for Alibaba's Hong Kong shares rose to the highest level since October. That is crazy. Basically, I smell a short squeeze coming for Alibaba. And it also went on to read, tech stocks have languished since hitting January peaks as China's consumption-led rebound turned out to be more muted than expected. While upside surprise to earnings can help lift sentiment, the sector faces headwinds from amped up U.S.-China tensions and high global interest rates, meaning basically that a sustained rebound would be hard to come by. Bloomberg is speculating that higher global interest rates will negatively affect China's recovery, which seems to run in contrast to the U.S. narrative of high rates and a never-ending tech rally. Well, how did all this speculation turn out? JD.com giant beat earnings estimate upsetting the whole fear of a slow China rebound. Today, headlines read, the U.S. listed shares of Neo Inc. and Alibaba Group Holdings rallied Thursday, as did the American Depository Shares ADS of other China-based companies in the wake of a big earnings beat from e-commerce giant JD.com. With Alibaba's earnings next Thursday, May 18th, I think we're going to see a continued squeeze of short sellers trying to cover on every single dip before the earnings call. 
Resistance above for BABA is around $95 to $98. Support below formed nicely around $82. If you look at the weekly Gaussian channel chart, you see that a move up over the next week would bring us back to the middle moving average price. If earnings come in as a beat, a jump above would be expected from these oversold conditions on the hourly chart. And a signal cross of momentum on the RSI daily chart, possibly moving us up above to the 50% range, which we know is back into bull territory. I'm very pleased with the shift in momentum on Alibaba. All right, guys, I'm gonna cover Tesla and NEO next, but before I do, if you need better trade tools, check out the offer from the Moomoo Investment app. They're offering up to 20 free stocks. This is a limited time offer for the month of May. You can click on the link in the top pinned comment and you'll get all the details of their offer. Get some free stock, you can start investing, and then you can find the chat group that I host on the app called Stock Josh Fam. It's a great community. I wanna give a shout out today to Miss Mary for moderating the chat when I'm not online. She does a great job. Guys, throw a heart in the comments if you're a member of the chat. Okay, on Tesla, we got a huge $20 move from the buy signal that I gave at 153 bucks. We're currently sitting at $172 today. But where is it going? Keeping my Tesla predictions very simple, we're still operating on an oversold signal set at the end of 2022 on the weekly RSI chart. Even though we've lost momentum from that epic push up to $215 off of January's lows, the stock is still slowly moving back into the bull zone above the 50% mark on the RSI. Now, the concern is the debt ceiling crisis, which is around the corner. It could get knocked back down, but at this point, I think we're still making a series of higher lows, 101 to 153 and moving up. Tesla is currently sitting below resistance of $173. That is its area that it's struggling to break through. But it's been in this zone for at least five trading days, which shows the bulls are holding on and trying to push it up. If we get a break and close above 173 that holds on the weekly, I believe that the next mile marker will be $183. In the news for Tesla today, Reuters reported update two. Musk says he found a new CEO for Twitter. The article goes on to say, Twitter CEO Elon Musk said on Thursday that he has found a new chief executive for the social media platform and that she will be starting in about six weeks. It reads, my role will transition to being executive chair and CTO overseeing product, software, and psyops. This is something that's been a big concern of the shareholders, Elon's divided focus. This though can only serve to boost Tesla shareholder confidence. Today, we squeezed a 2.4% move out of that news. So not bad. All right, what's going on with NEO? Let's dive into NEO. Full disclosure, I'm not a NEO shareholder. And if you understand the technicals that I've given you guys in the past, you actually know why. I'm bearish on NEO when the stock is below the critical price of $9.50. I'm bullish if it breaks above, bearish if it's below. When it broke above $9.50 in the past, it pushed all the way up to a near $11. Since it broke below, the stock saw a new low moving all the way down to $7.33 very close to the $6 target that I gave on NEO about eight months ago. That's when it was trading between $15 and $17. The momentum was lost for NEO back in March of 2021. This is not even a 2022 problem. And a simple look at the weekly RSI chart shows you that you can clearly see that it's been in bear territory ever since then. It is still in bear territory, and it's not even building momentum to move out of it. It's just moving sideways through bear territory from a technical perspective. But because NEO popped today, I would say it's a day of rejoicing for NEO shareholders, so I'm not gonna beat the stock down too much. The question is, what is support and resistance moving forward? Support for NEO is built up around $7.80. If NEO will continue to move up on this bullish earnings news for Chinese stocks, it needs to hold $7.80. And the resistance above right now is sitting at $9.10. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you guys today is this chart from Bloomberg. It shows that US tech is back by record levels relative to the S&P. It states this crowded sector is still at risk from recession and high interest rates. We know that's the story. The main thing that you guys need to see is that we are back at the dot-com level peak for tech stocks. This is just a visual reminder of how high the tech stocks have climbed. And it is important to keep in mind the inherent risks in this overbought sector. 
Let me know in the comments if you think big tech is gonna blow past the dot-com peak or will it cool off in the days ahead. That's it for me today, guys. As always, thank you guys for hitting the like. Hit that subscribe if you're new and you wanna keep getting this content. As always, peace and blessings, my friends. We'll see you in the chat.